everyone. It's good to be with you. I thought I'd start my time uh, just by sharing this um, this song. It's a uh, kind of an Advent uh, hymn. Some of you right now are noticing the tree and maybe uh, casting judgment. This is my studio and I'm a house. Uh, number one, number two, it's 2020. Uh, you know, uh, we all need a little bit of hope where we can find it. But um, since we are in the season of Advent, I just thought it'd be fitting uh, just to start my time by sharing this, this song. Hear the angels sing, there's hope for everyone. To announce our King, there's hope for everyone. What good news they bring, there's hope for everyone. Angels sing, there's hope for everyone. They came from afar, there's hope for everyone. Wise men saw the star, there's hope for everyone. Shepherds heard the choir, there's hope for everyone. From afar, there's hope for everyone. And we are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness. Bending low to be among us Bring your glory in the highest Jesus, come let us adore There's hope for everyone On the manger floor There's hope for everyone What are you waiting for? There's hope for everyone. Come adore. There's hope for everyone. We are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness, bending low to be a mother. Bring your glory in the highest, Jesus, come and the clouds, there's hope for everyone, hear the trumpet sound, there's hope for everyone, all of heaven shouts, there's hope for everyone. Who you are. You 
you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you Well, uh, 2020, I gave a talk right after I played that song and it got erased. So I didn't find that out until I was editing the video. So, uh, same sweater, different t-shirt. Uh, wanted to share a quick few thoughts on hope as it pertains to pursuing unity. And some of that is unity in the church. And some of that is just a greater sense of unity and common good in the world. Um, my wife and I, we live in Nashville. We've been here for seven years. This fall, because of COVID, we decided to homeschool our kids, which is the irony of God, because it's the one thing that we said we would never do. And um, yeah, God has a great sense of humor. Uh, while working through catechism with my oldest son, I was really struck one day by when we were going over through the, the different theological virtues and we got to hope, how it talked about how the sins against hope were presumption and despair. And that really, that's something that I've carried in my heart all through the fall. And, um, and I think it's, those words are really important when we talk about this time and this context in which we find ourselves in with COVID, but also with the state of disunity in the world, in our country, and in the church. Um, really quick, a really quick recap of my story. I, I was born and raised in Newfoundland, Canada, grew up Catholic, stopped going to church in high school. Uh, when I was 20, my parents moved, or my mom moved to Arizona, and her, my parents got divorced. My, uh, it was 25 years ago this year. My cousin invited me to go back to mass with her. All of her friends grew up in charismatic community. So by the end of the summer, um, I was kind of, I was doing that full time. Uh, and I was also a full time student at Arizona State. I was a jazz major. And those two experiences of being in a very secular university campus and also kind of being in a pretty um, spiritual, hyper spiritual environment, uh, were really good for me because I think um, I've had these experiences of faith here, but then I would go here to the school and I was surrounded by people who did not think the way that I did and did, did not believe what I believed. And in some ways that was really healthy because it constantly forced me to ask the question, how do I explain this to someone who doesn't believe what I believe? And how do I find common ground with people who don't agree with what I with what I think or what I feel or what I believe? And because I noticed that, and not just Christians, everyone uh, can sometimes, we all can want to find, seek people out who believe the same things we do. But the temptation is, is that we just get surrounded with those people. And those are the only people that we're around. And fast forward 25 years later, especially with the dawn and the advent of the internet, um, we can just create echo chambers where, of just people who just keep saying the same things that we say. And it sometimes it's really hard to grow. Um, I think in particularly when it comes to dialogue and when it comes to the pursuit of common good or common ground, 
um, the ability to listen to diverse views, have disagreements, um, listen first, seek to understand. It's really, really important. You know, when, uh, 10 years ago when I started touring full time and I was writing songs that Christians from other denominations were um, singing, in some ways what, what drove that was a Bible study on the 17th chapter of John's Gospel where Jesus prayed for unity. And simultaneously, at the same time, two other things happened. A guy named Chris Tomlin recorded a song I wrote, who is Baptist, sang it at a conference with 11,000 Baptist college students. And I was there floored because this was not something that was on my radar of my life plan. Um, a couple of months later, while teaching this Bible study on John 17, Brother Roger, um, who was the founder of Ties A, which was an ecumenical prayer community in France, passed away. And reading about his life after he had died, I really felt the Holy Spirit say, this is a torch that you're going to carry. You're going to carry part of this kind of a mission. And so that's what I've tried to do. And I realized songs can become a way in which common ground is achieved. Um, the thing about singing a song with someone is when you do, uh, you create uh, a, a moment of common ground. Because you have to both kind of believe in what you're singing about if you're willing to sing it. For some people, that means embarrassing yourself publicly just by singing. Um, but that's the, only, that's the first step. I think the next step after realizing, oh, we sing this song, we have something in common. If we have something in common, then can, is there the opportunity to actually have a relationship here? And I think the, the concept of ecumenism in some ways has been shrunk within the church or compartmentalized in the church to be just sort of interreligious dialogue um, and not necessarily seen holistically as, which I think is why the Holy Father did what he did with, with Karis, is that we have to start to understand that the social teaching of the church, the uh, evangelistic teaching of the church, the moral teaching of the church, and the side of the church that seeks to create opportunities of common ground and um, reconciliation, those are really all part of the work of Jesus, which is the reconciliation of all things. So my encouragement to you during this Advent season is that you ask yourself the question, am I making space for hope, which is that divine sense of expectation, specifically around the area of unity in the church, in the world, in our country? Or am I giving into despair and, and am I giving in to presumption? Um, I think that if we want to see a world reconciled to Christ, it has to start in our families, in our own hearts, and it has to start in the church. God bless you. Take care.